Hello everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful Highland Cow also known as the Scottish Highland Cow. This, of course, is a very, very special listener episode dedicated to Katie, to Jenna, and to Silas, who actually requested a slightly different cow, and I'll be sure to give Silas a shout-out again. But many suggestions were of a broad, general cow, and so I didn't want to count anybody out. I hope you all enjoy your very own episode, and if any of you have a cow or any other animal that you would love to learn about, that you find cool, you can send a message to the Instagram Relax with Animal Facts. You can go to the website relaxwithanimalfacts.com and go to the Animal Request tab. And lastly, you could always email relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. Your suggestions mean the world, and you get your very own episodes for doing so. Before we start treading through the beautiful grass of the Scottish Highlands, this episode is actually a very special one. After 109 episodes, so this is the 110th episode officially, we have the very first sponsor of the show. I've been quite picky and have declined a few sponsorship offers until now, but Cozy Earth was kind enough to reach out, and after giving some of their sheets a try and seeing what they're all about, I can genuinely say that their stuff rocks. They make really high-quality loungewear and bedding, which is perfect when we're learning about our animal friends from our pillows. And their stuff is made from 100% viscose from bamboo, which is very sustainable and also softer than anything I've ever felt. It took me a while to actually make my bed with them because I kept stopping to feel how incredibly soft they were. Their loungewear and their bedding is also very, very breathable, which makes for one of the most comfortable night's sleep I've had. So they have a 100-night sleep test, so if you don't love listening to animal facts from your dream cloud after 100 nights, you can send it back for a full refund. And Cozy Earth was really generous in giving a 35% off coupon on everything on their website, specifically for you guys, which is over 100 bucks off of their bamboo sheet set. So their website is CozyEarth.com, C-O-C-Z-Y-E-A-R-T-H.com. Thank you, Cozy Earth, for supporting the show. So I'm just going to say where I got my facts from before we dive right into the episode. I got my facts from highlandtitles.com, animalia.bio, eaglebray.co.uk, and lastly, as always, etimonline.com. All of those resources are in the show notes or the description of this episode. So if you would like to learn more, they are all there for your exploration. I would like for all of you to notice maybe where you're carrying some tension. Is it in the neck? Is it in the arms? Maybe in the legs? Some of you who listen to this podcast with somebody else might notice that it's almost never the same between the two of you. In my case today, it's in my hands and my forearms, as it always is. But we don't really need all of that tension where we are going. So I encourage you to relax those parts of your body right alongside me as we go into this immersive experience into the Scottish grasslands where the Highland cow resides. I can't describe how excited I am to be leading you through the Scottish Highlands today. As many of you know, Scotland is a place near and dear to my heart as a place of profound and rich 
history, as well as major contributions to things like law and economics. The Highland Cow just is one more reason for us to love Scotland. So the Highland Cow is a very hardy breed. At the top of the show, when we said that they are a furry friend of ours, I was not at all kidding. I suppose they would be more of a hairy friend of ours, but that doesn't sound as good. But they have really long hair and a double coat of hair, which is particularly unusual. It has this very downy undercoat underneath with an outside layer of hair that is the really oily and shiny part. And they have the longest hair of any cattle breed in the world. These hairy cattle also are incredibly large as well. The bulls, meaning the male highland cow, will weigh up to 1,760 pounds on average. That's about 800 kilograms. And because we are in Scotland, that 1,760 pounds is equal to 125.7 stone. If we are walking the meadows in Scotland, we might as well also use some of their units of measurement. The cows, or the females, will weigh about 600 pounds less on average at around 1,100 pounds or 78.7 stone. And perhaps this is one of the reasons that their milk, generally, has a high butterfat content. Their distinctive long hair that makes them look like giant horned teddy bears keeps them very warm in the winter time from the sometimes harsh weather of the highlands. It also protects their eyes from flies and maybe some other things that might be poking out from the brush or from the undergrowth. This is just all around a piece of hairy Kevlar. But this hair that doubles as a piece of armor also is what makes them so popular as a cattle breed. And with their hair swayed all over the place, one wonders if they can even see because of how much hair is blocking their eyes. The hair will generally get shorter in the summertime, and when they are bred in different climates in which it might be a bit more temperate, it will not grow as long. So this long hair will also mean that they won't have the need to store so much waste fat that you will find in many other breeds of cattle. We always imagine a kind of ginger color or a brownish color, but originally they were actually black. Just as we have bred certain dogs to look a kind of way, the Victorians, who liked the ginger cows, selectively bred them to the point that ginger all of a sudden became the very standard Scottish Highland cow color that we all associate with this magnificent creature. And depending on the breeder, there are some Highland cows that can be seen in colors like red, yellow, silver, brindle, and dun. So those two, brindle and dun, are similar in terms that they look sort of reddish with black. It is just a difference in patterning, but suffice to say that there are many different colors of the Highland cow out there. And one fun fact is that they are the oldest registered breed of cattle in the world. They are not number two, they are not number three, they are indeed taking the gold medal as the oldest registered breed. So not only do we have an animal that is unique in physical characteristics, we have an animal that is very historically sensitive. This animal is an intimate part of human history. Cattle in general have been our companions for a long time, but the Highland cow in particular gives us a very unique look into an animal that has enriched the lives of many Scotsmen and others through the generations. And speaking of history, why don't we just go back into it a little bit? So as we are strolling through the remarkably green grasslands, let us also tread down memory lane a little bit into the history of the Highland Cow. 
The oldest recorded history we have of the Highland Cow begins in the 6th century AD, meaning the 500s. They go back as far as we can tell to the 6th century AD, while the first written references to the Highland cattle date to the 12th century AD. So as far back as the 500s, about 1500 years ago, while the written references to them are in the 1100s, about 900 years ago. It is still a matter of debate among some whether they had their origins in Scotland or if they were actually imported from Scandinavia around the time when the Vikings were invading Great Britain. So this ancient breed of cattle is still under some dispute and controversy in terms of where they actually came from. The most accepted view was that the Highland Cow was the result of blending two ancient Asiatic breeds known as Bos longifrons and Bos primigenius. Now both of these breeds had migrated from the Far East and from Mongolia to the region of the Black Sea. One of them gave the long horns and the other the wonderful hairy coat that they sport so fashionably. But fast forwarding to the 18th century, that's the 1700s, thousands and thousands of beautiful highland cattle grazed upon the forests and hills of Strathsby. And in the summer, they would be taken up into the high quarries where herdsmen would stay in these temporary buildings on the hills to look after them as they grazed and enjoyed the altitude. One fact that may be a fact, or it might be a legend, which legends tell us much still of what is true, Queen Victoria is said to have commented on a trip to the Highlands that she preferred the red-colored cattle, and in an effort to please the Queen, they began that selective breeding process to get more of that reddish color that we see today. So we might have Queen Victoria to thank for the fluffy ginger highland cow we see so often today. Now apart from the highlands of Scotland, they can also be found in the south of Scotland, in other parts of Europe, as well as in North and South America and Australia. They can even be found foraging up in the Andes Mountains, thousands of feet above sea level. So if you are having a harder time tracking down one of these cows in Scotland, you only need to ask one of the locals where the nearest hairy coo is, a very affectionate distinction that the locals have made for their fluffy friends. The Highland cattle will live within a hierarchical system where individuals are ranked on different factors. Now we see this in quite a many species. I cannot actually think of a species that is commonly found in groups that doesn't have one, but the males will generally lead the calves born from the top ranking Highland cows will automatically get a higher position in the herd. So even the Highland cows seem to prefer a kind of aristocracy, which is kind of funny. Friendly behavior between the animals will look like licking and play fighting. They are strong grazers and very skillful when they are foraging for food. And during even the winter months, they will dig through the snow layers with their impressive horns to get to the vegetation. And these horns will not only serve for digging, but when encountering some kind of a predator, they are able to defend themselves. So they have this kind of dual purpose. A group of highland cows is known as a herd, drove, yoke, team, drift, or mob. So there are a couple of different names for a group of these guys. And I cannot believe I almost forgot. The scientific name of the Highland cow is the Bos taurus taurus. 
Highland cows have mainly been kept historically for milk and for meat. Their milk can have a butterfat content of up to 10% naturally, which some farmers seem to love, but some say it is an acquired taste. But a lot of farmers prefer to keep these hairy coos specifically for meat. The gestation for the highland cow is about nine months and yields one single offspring. When they are born, they are able to quickly stand and walk and even recognize their mother. And the mother cow will be very, very devoted to raising its young, nursing them for about six months before they are mostly grown up. They will, however, first give birth at around the age of two to three and are able to have more cow babies up to 19 years of age. One interesting difference between the bull and the cow, or between the male and female highland cattle, is their horns. The bulls or the males of the highland cattle will often have horns that grow forwards and slightly downwards, having a much wider base whereas the cow or the female highland cattle will have horns that go more upwards and are longer and finer at the tip than the wider tips of the bull's horns. So there is a way to tell them apart. Even though they have these huge horns, they are indeed very friendly. Of course, unless very immediately threatened, they have a very good reputation for their meek temperament and have historically always been a very docile creature. They are very rarely seen to show aggression and are generally very low stress animals, even within their herds having a great understanding between one another and never really fighting. They also seem to enjoy the company of humans approaching them as they are walking to try to close the gap and get maybe some pets or some sort of affection. They will spend about 8 hours per day grazing and are able to eat up to 150 pounds or 70 kilograms of grass. Again, that is just under 11 stone of grass. And as long as this creature has access to plenty of fresh water, they will thrive. They will eat almost anything if it has some form of food or nutritional value. That includes things like honeysuckle vines, tree leaves, and poison ivy. They are not at all picky. They would munch away and thrive in pastures that would be very poorly suited to many other cattle that would have a very hard time surviving. And to this day, after all of our history together with the Highland Cow, we are not entirely sure if they can actually see where they're going. Maybe they have some form of really good vision or other senses that are heightened but they know where to go, even with the long fringe, or as it is known in technical terms, the Dawson blocking the way of their vision. These cows just seem to be very chill, relaxed, and just want to drink and eat and wander the wonderful meadows that they are in. These cattle are incredibly relaxed and just want access to fresh water and as much greens as they can munch on. Let us go to the last fact of the episode, which is the name. What does this creature's name mean or what does it come from? We are actually doing two words today. One of them is Highland. So this word, highland, comes from an old English word that means mountainous country. And the highlands mountainous district of Scotland was first recorded somewhere in the early 15th century. The word cattle first goes back to the mid-13th century, which actually didn't mean cows, but meant in general property of any kind. It included things like land and money. It only began to be limited to cows and bulls in the late 16th century. That word cattle comes from the medieval Latin capital, which meant property or stock. 
So that is where we get the word cattle from. So the etymologies of these words, highland and cattle, when literally transposed into modern day speech, would mean mountainous country property. And we can see just how much history is interwoven here in the name of our furry friend today. So let us move on to the review portion of the episode in which I read a review from a very special listener out there who wrote in on Apple Podcasts. And in today's episode, we are reading a review from 123 Roan, who wrote all the way from the United States of America. And 123 Roan writes, It helps me calm down and I listen to it when I am on road trips. Thank you, 123 Roan, for taking the time to write that review. I am so happy that you like the show and that it can make your road trips more fun and that it helps you to relax and, in today's case, learn about very hairy cattle. If the podcast helps you and you enjoy it, leaving a review like Roan did is something that really impacts the show and it helps more and more Listeners find the show and join us in the grasslands or in the seas or the mountains. Thank you all for joining me on today's episode. What a wonderful creature. If you want to learn about an animal that you find interesting and would like your very own episode, make sure to send in your requests either by sending a message to Relax with Animal Facts on Instagram going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab, or by sending an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. If you want more of the Relax With Animal Facts podcast on the Patreon, we have learned about the dodo, the mammoth, and the Tasmanian tiger so far. The Extinct Animal miniseries is available exclusively on Patreon, so you can go to the show notes if that interests you. Thank you all again for joining me on today's podcast episode. I hope to see you on the next episode with the next animal. Take care.